Good morning. It's technically now good afternoon. This is take two. I did this this morning, did this whole video this morning, and uh, did not turn out very good. It was like 45, 50 minutes, because I had to keep going back and forth and getting, uninterrupt, getting interrupted, and uh, my view from the top down didn't turn out very good, and so we're gonna give it take two. Hopefully this one goes better. I'm now in the garage back home, and I wanted to give you guys a run through on uh, my tool setup at work. I've had a couple of people uh, ask for this on Instagram and YouTube. People talk about you know what uh, what I use day to day at the shop. If you're a longtime viewer of the vlog, you know I do a fair amount of bike work at the store. I'm a tool guy. I'm a tech guy. I'm a total nerd. I love it. This is the kind of stuff that I like to watch on the internet. This is the stuff that I think a lot of you like to watch on the internet. And with all of this that's going on right now, we've got a lot of time to watch the internet. Hopefully, you're not watching too much of the wrong stuff and you're watching plenty of the right stuff. I'm, uh, I'm gonna do my best to provide more entertainment as usual. I had somebody ask on uh, Instagram, they actually tagged me in a little challenge to post your favorite bike tool. So I will get to my favorite tool in just a little bit. And let's dive in. Let me readjust the camera and uh, we'll go from there. All right guys, if you could see the behind the scenes video of this, you would be laughing your face off. I've got camera pointed down. I've got the mic taped to the uh, tripod. I'm standing on a Pelican case and uh, we're here to do all of this with our hands. I'm gonna be reaching down a little bit so you might see some of my face and stuff too, but I'm standing up here to make sure that I can get you uh, tools and focus and all that. That was a big problem I had earlier. This is my set up at the shop. This is a adventure tool roll. Uh, I believe it's called the uh, the shop roll. I'm pretty sure. Um, I have a bunch of these guys' stuff. I love it. Uh, they're great peeps. Uh, I've never actually met them in person, but I feel like I know them quite well through social media, Paul and Amy. They're good peeps. Everything's handmade in Colorado. Uh, they're kind of big into the truck overland world. Um, I was turned on them from the guys at SRAM. I used to have a black one that had a zipper pocket like this on one side and on that side had a three pocket um, flap, little Velcro style. I like it a lot better because it was black. That's like, that's my favorite color. I like things that are black, um, black cars, black bikes, black, all that stuff. Um, but I really wanted to get this one because of the uh, secondary side pocket over here the second zipper. So now these are duplicates. I like that a lot better. The orange gets really dirty. It's high contrast. You can see it gets pretty kind of tattered. Um, it's not tattered, but it's just kind of dirty look. And I haven't found a really good way to clean it. So at the shop, I started to fold it over. This canvas, waxed canvas is a lot easier to clean. That's, that's it. So uh, Adventure Tool Company, these guys do sweet stuff. I got a bunch of their little pouches and secondary tool wraps and all of that. We'll start with one of my more liked tools this snap on hammer. This is a um, metal face and half plastic face. And it's dead below, but it doesn't have like the sand in it. I don't like that stuff. And these hammers are probably some of the best hammers ever. No, they're not cheap. And on that topic, you'd be like, oh man, snap on must be nice. You know, this and that, yada, yada, yada. Okay, I buy these tools uh, because one, they have a lifetime warranty. I have broken a few. There's a couple of broken ones in here. I'm waiting to uh, get fixed because nobody's out driving around right now. Um, but I have a guy that I go to, have been going to for a while. And I buy these tools because when we work on any customer's bike, but in particular, very intricate work on um, really high-end bikes and also with um, just tools that are delicate and aluminum and titanium and shallow button head bits, the tools gotta fit really, really, really good. I've worked with a lot of other tools and everybody will you know, repeat the same thing, but the quality in this stuff does really matter. It is noticeable. And I feel much more confident taking on a task with these tools. And I feel much more confident in the tool lasting, not damaging the tool, not damaging the bolt, not damaging the bike, whatever the part may be. But there's something to be said about using a quality tool to get the job done. Do it right the first time and it's all you need to do. Rock shock, digital shock pump, super simple, super straightforward. Uh, Abbey tool, crombie, and uh, whatchamacallit, uh, chain whip. I mean, I like this. The problem is this tool, and particularly this side, 
is see how it's bent yeah it's cool it gets the job done for like really easy straightforward brand new high-end cassettes but a lot of times it bends yeah i give this tool like a six it's okay not my favorite what i would prefer is to do this and then you put this on it this is a chain whip yes this is also an abby tool but i give this abby tool a 10. okay this thing on here gets everything off no problem nipex cutters straightforward uh, just some like dyke styles and underneath them are a smaller version a 10 inch version of this tool we'll get there in a little bit but 10 inch version of that is underneath that next up probably my one of my more liked tools these are a usog t-handle but non-sliding i don't like the slider it's all loose and doesn't work super good this is really robust doesn't wobble and stuff i have it in three four five six eight and ten i took out the eight and ten because i had a lot of duplicates and those really big heavy tools and the 10 is very big and very heavy this not for actual usage it doesn't get a lot of usage but this tool might be one of my favorites just for the fidget factor just look how perfectly that spins that might be one of the most balanced tools i have actually probably it is the most balanced tool i have and for some reason God, i just freaking love this three millimeter i use it a fair amount justin eagle the railers and setting um thompson stand i mean I, I use it a lot, but not as much. It's not as common as size. Three mil. Bottle cage bolts, sick. Works wonders. Um, so that's one of my favorite tools. Three, four, five, six. That little zone is always messy and it really bothers me, but I don't have any other way that I'd fix it. But I like those tools, so I keep them in there. T25 uh, on a little screwdriver blade. Picks, I use these a lot. These are long. This one's stuck. Um, I use this one with the curved hook on it to... Uh, fish out uh, anything from internally routed bikes foam donuts in there shimano e tube wires like everything catch it hook it pull it out this one i use with a little right angle on there to catch the inside of a hydraulic hose and pull it out so i like more use it this direction but you can get it out of funky angles these are two very useful tools and i get the long version because it's always inside the frame where you can't get your fingers to it on the pliers I think most people are familiar with these uh, sliding pliers. So boom, boom. It's basically a crescent wrench that you can actually get full lockage on. I have these in three sizes. I only use this size and this size. This small little guy, I might even just leave it home. I never use it. I, mm, I use it a couple times, occasionally, randomly. Sometimes I use it for a spoke wrench when I need to. Don't tell anybody. Snap on, uh, very, very, very fine tip pliers, precision pliers. A little bit bummed, they're not made in America. They're made in Spain. I have two pairs of Spanish snap-on pliers, which we're sporting all sides, but I like the American made stuff. But flush cuts, um, everyone knows, use them for zip ties. They work really well. Pretty much only use for zip ties. Made in America, duckbill pliers. Duckbills, sick. Small needle nose, these have a uh, really good purchase amount on the end, but really small package and form. So I like these a lot, mighty. Lastly on the pliers, cutters. Uh, these are Nipex, I don't know, I think they're called Bowman cutters, wire cable. We use them for cutting housing. I like them, one, because when you grab it, it undoes the safety. I like that, that's cool. And uh, it's kind of an impulse. Trent, one of the guys at the shop, bought these because they had a, uh, showing of cutting uh, campy cable housing with these on their website where I bought them from, KC Tool. So he got them and then I had to get them. Bunch of picks, straight forward, pick, straight forward. T8, T10, number one screwdriver, works well. This is the other little T25 or no, 2.5 that I was using, made by PB, PB Swiss that uh, was it, it works good. It's good for like adjusting E-tap derailleur limit screws and B-tension screws. This T25, a lot of guys use because it's really good. I like this. I've used a lot of uh, like Weha ones. I'm not a big German tool guy. Um, I don't know. Other than Nipex, they don't, I haven't had anything that really like stokes me out. Not much in this toolbox is German. 
It's mostly American made, which I really like. This one works good. Flathead and a punch, right? Punch, because when bearing polar doesn't work, this always works. So big, uh, this is a quarter inch steel punch. This is probably one of my favorite tools in the drawer. This is a swivel head quarter inch drive. It has a spinner on it. This is like a number one thing. You put these on all your ratchets, okay? You put spinners on them. And T25 bit. Obviously I can put any bit on here, so I do swap it out a lot. But I specifically like the long T25 because Previously, you didn't really need long ones, but now with this on set of flat mount brakes, uh, the rotor gets in the way, especially on the rear, right? This always hits the rotor. Now I have this nice long one, clears the rotor. This is a 100 mil bit. Rotors are well clear of that. So you can just kind of, you know, I like it a lot. Gold Sharpie, because everybody else uses silver. All parts on my bike are black. Black Sharpies don't work. Everybody else has silver. I use gold. These little quarter inch guys. Yes, I have two of them because one time you have a four and you have a five. You don't want to have to keep changing bits all the time. This bin, tape measure, gets the job done. It's in metric, it's in inches. Change tool, straightforward. This is a cool tool that I made. The guys at SRAM taught me about this. Why bleed a brake and then have yourself uh, put the wheel all the way back in to realize it's still not good. Better be good the first time, but this helps you check it. It's a cut rotor. Bada bing, bada boom. A screwdriver that's only used for one company's derailleur, but it's not red. Another little bits, bags, bobs, all the above. Got some bottom bracket tools. Got a couple punches, uh, no tube valve cord mover. Stuff I don't use a lot, but I kind of need to have around. Bearing puller, the OG enduro bearing puller. These guys are awesome. Derailleur hanger gauge. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay. That's a wrap. That's what I work on. That's the layout. I like it a lot. It works really well for me. There is one last thing y'all are waiting for. You want to know what my favorite tool is. I've talked about it. I've said there's some cool stuff in here. I like it a lot. I use it a lot, but there's one tool that I really, 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 really like. And drum roll, please wait for it. What is it? That's my favorite tool. Traveling around with rotors that have six bolts, have two sets per wheel per wheel set, then you have six wheel sets, 12, six, it's ridiculous. Okay, there's a lot of rotor bolts. This guy is the best. It's got little lights, not that you ever need them, but it's got them. It's got a forward button and a back button. No, no pushing the toggles. That's like the coolest part right there. You're not pushing that through and knowing it's in the reverse direction. It's got a little battery indicator light. It's sick. My favorite tool ever. It has a magnetized base. So when I'm at the shop, we have a steel workbench. It doesn't get knocked over. You're probably going to say you should buy this one. It's a German tool. It's Bosch. They make really good stuff, right? No. Can you hear how it like has to spin up? And it has no power. I have to crank the power way higher to get it. The batteries die super fast on this thing. It does not hold a candle to this one. I just got a little heated in that. I really like this. That's why. I do use them every day. That's why I have what I have. This works for me. Let me know what else you like below. So that's a wrap. That's my favorite uh, tool. That's a that's the rundown on what I use at the shop. And hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, if you've gotten this far in the video, I think you're into tools too. So if you saw something that you don't have that you want to get, let me know below. Let me know your favorite tool below as well. I'd love to hear it. What you guys use. I wish you could post videos and pictures on YouTube. I should say I wish you could post pictures on YouTube. But if you want to, hit me up on Instagram with your favorite tool. And uh, I'll show you mine as well. You actually already sure you know mine. But I uh, would love to hear what you guys uh, have, what you're using. I'm getting more videos going. I'm keeping them rolling. I know I've got a little bit more time. We are still open for business at the store. Um, we're, we're gonna have different parameters. We're operating in a very clean environment, as clean as possible. We're working as hard as possible to keep us healthy at the staff, our customers healthy, because we want to stay open. Um, so we're doing our very best. And uh, if you guys are local and you've watched this, thank you for your patience and um, working with us. And we've gotten a, a lot of new folks coming in the door that are getting on bikes, so I think it's great. 
and uh, hopefully this is a, a real positive spin on uh, what's going on and maybe people will start focusing on their health a little bit more when uh, something can be threatened for sure. So cycling is a great way to do that. It's a great way to stay fit, stay healthy, um, you know, obviously reduce weight, reduce anxiety, reduce stress, you can do wonders, soak in fresh air. So anyways, that's a different tangent. Anyways, 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 we'll see you guys in the next video. That's a wrap, over and out, peace.